Once upon a time in the distant past, after the universe and all within was created, there was a seeker of knowledge. The man learned everything he could from the people of the earth, and came to realize their knowledge is incomplete. The man went up to the mountains. He was very worried because he could not get answers on his questions about the region of all. On the mountain top, the man cried and said, Oh, how elusive you are! For centuries, countless of educated ones were seeking you. They can find your tracks, they can see you are, but in the darkness of space, they fail to find you. You are called the source of all, the origin of matter, the giver and the taker. All the worlds exist because of you, yet man failed to find you. Are you not to be found because you do not exist? But we know you must exist, else how can the world be? You are not to be found, but you are everything. You must be. Then why are you hiding from us? asked the man. The man sat down, for he was tired of asking questions and seeking answers. From the silence, a voice came to him. Oh, my son, but I do exist. I am not of you, but you are of me. In your world, you can only see that which is of opposing manner. You can't measure or see or observe or count anything that does not have an opposite. I am, but I am not to be found because I do not have an opposite. Only when I become separated in my two opposing poles can I be seen, observed and measured. But you are the quest of my life. I need to find you. I need to see you and get the answers on my questions, cried the man. Ether answers him with pity. I am sorry, mankind, but you will first need to know how to change me before I can reveal my might to you. What did the man ask? But how is it possible for me to change you if I cannot find you? The answer, my son, has been given to you. Use your voice to speak the sound. Use your eyes to see the light. Use your hands to spread the energy. Then you will find me. The man asked, If I use my voice and my eyes and my hands, how then will I know you? Either answers man, You will see me, hear me, and you will feel my presence. Happily the man turned to go practice that which he's learned. As he started moving down the mountain, Ether called him back and said, There is, however, one problem. Once you know me, you will never be able to sleep or rest, because for me to exist in your world, you will forever need to keep me in two places and never allow my two parts to come together again. For when you think you know me, I am not the ether anymore. I will be the most fearsome force of lightning. I will be the two opposite forces of electricity. If for one moment you fail to keep separation, I will become this destroyer and there will be nothing. Sadly, Ether asked, My son, are you sure you want to know me? Upon which the man answers, Yes, master, I do. For when I know you, I will become a god of creation and destruction. Turning away from man, Ether said, Then, my son, you will need to learn the power of sound. May God have mercy upon your soul. Knowledge is everything. Fear is due to a lack of knowledge. Modern physics suffers from a very strange disease called aetherophobia. If they use the word ether in any of their documents or presentations, they risk complete banishment. So they developed a thing called quantum physics. Anything as long as you don't call it aether. As I stated in my previous videos and previous parts, ether does not exist. It does not exist because it cannot be observed, it is not polarized. However, ether was there, it is there, it is an existing substance, substance, but only because we cannot observe it, say that it does not exist. It has been there before any galaxy, any solar system, any star, any planet, any asteroid, matters, elements, atoms, before anything, because everything came from the ether. 
So let me give you my definition of ether. Ether is the substance from which all matter originates. It occupies all space and gives rise to the electrical and magnetic phenomena. However, you will notice that gravity does not have any place in my ether. Ether is a Greek word first used by the poet Hesoid around 680 BC. Ether was the first born elemental god of the bright, glowing in the upper airs of heaven. The substance of light. Now, that says a lot. Sometimes the ether was described as a celestial fire, the place from where everything came forth. The Greek ether has an ancient Hindu Indus Valley similarity called Akasha, which describes the point of origin, the center of a magnetic compass. Ether also means to burn and to shine. The very famous British author William Shakespeare had his own sayings about ether. Ether is the most mysterious element. You have to master the four earthy elements before you can master the ether. The earthy elements being earth, air, water and fire. Plato explained the four earthy elements, earth, water, air and fire as linear, subjected to change and moving naturally in straight lines. The fifth element is not subjected to change and move in circles. These elements are so nicely described by Shakespeare, but they are much more than we generally understand. It is also representing the four states of matter, plus the one non-state, solid, liquid, gas, fire and ether. Let us have a look from different perspective. From ether came fire, which is light, air, which is hydrogen, water, which is liquid, eventually the earth, which is solid like carbon. Earth is a solid material. It also represents the earth phase in human development. During this stage we have learned how to do agriculture, mining and eventually processing earth materials into new products. Water represents liquid material. Technological development around water is phenomenal. Humans started using water as irrigation, later for transportation like ships. The use of liquid fuel also falls under the classification of development. The element of air represents the gaseous material. It also refers to using various minerals in gas form. Think of oxygen, nitrogen, fluor, propane, etc. During this development phase, we reached for the sky with our aircraft. Fire represents heat and energy. Starting off as a heating and cooking utility, we now use nuclear power stations and plasma. Truly a phenomenal development for humankind. Finally, there is a non-earthy element of ether. The earthy stages were all linear, from one point a continued development until where we are today. We never went back to the pre-current development stages. Ether is the only cyclic stage. We will finally break away from the linear. The universe is waiting for us. Albert Einstein in 1920 had his own view about ether. We may say that according to the general theory of relativity, space is endowed with the physical qualities. In this sense, therefore, there exists ether. According to the general theory of relativity, space without ether is unthinkable. So, here is my point for point description of everything I found about ether and what I personally believe to be the facts. Ether is the basic substratum of all space, the raw essence of the universe, the origin of everything. Ether permeates the innermost recesses of all material. Without it, the universe is contrary to nature, reason and common sense. Without it, the universe is utterly absurd. Ether is the origin of all matter, the universe and all that is within this universe. Before there were any galaxies, solar systems, earth, planets, animals, matter, even before the first element of hydrogen came to existence, there was the ether. The universe was empty, a void of nothing, but that void is still filled with a substance. The nothingness came from the failure to observe, see or measure because this substance does not have a polarity. The universe is big, much bigger than any of the current models, which is after all limited to our range of view. As Hubble and other telescopes get improved, I am sure they will find a lot more galaxies much further than the present 13.2 billion light years. The universe is much older than any human can even postulate. The 90 billion years we think of now, well, I think that's just the first step in discovery of the age in our universe. The substance ether that fills the universe does not have any electrical, magnetic, gravity or any other properties whatsoever. Nothing except the phonon, the voice of God, 
can have any effect on this substance. Only by means of that phonon can it be changed to be an observable material. How can I be so sure that ether does exist? Simply, we just take a look at the cosmos. With all our modern abilities to see further, more detail and to observe a wider spectrum, we have learned more about the workings of the universe in this past 20 years than in the preceding 3000. But maybe the 6000 year old Sumerian students had teachers that knew more than us. The creation is not finished, it is still an ongoing process. All the time new matter is born from nothing and all matter disintegrates into nothing. This is not a chaotic random occurrence. Let us take a good look at any galaxy. Even a kid will immediately point at the center of the galaxy as a point of origin. Young galaxies are small, old ones are bigger. Somehow, there is a continued supply of material at the center of any galaxy, which is all the time allowing more and more cosmic bodies to be created. The human-created laws of conservation does not allow for this. Only if we consider the concept of ether can we find an answer. Because of the new bodies coming into existence, they also push the older bodies away, and you have the typical galactical shape. There are two observations about the center parts of galaxies. First, they all have a high concentration of energy and light. That is the birth process. Second, and this I postulate, the old galaxies are forming a black hole in the center, displacing the birthplace with an area of annihilation. Here is a new one for you. Black holes do not suck everything into with a pulling gravity and compressing it into little blobs. The black hole is the end of material existence. It neutralizes all polarity. The black hole is the beginning of a next aether state, a new cycle. Then we have the jet streams of energy coming from such black holes. Under very specific conditions, such a black hole will emit powerful beams of ultra energy, as well as a wide spectrum of radio and electromagnetic energy. This is sent far out into space. I believe these jet beams are the kickstart for the formation of new galaxies. Wait a moment, what do we have here? We have a big question. What is this material observed and emitted from the now X black hole? It is classified as cosmic, cosmic radiation. In the next section about sound, we will take a more in-depth look at this. The universe is filled with ether. The ether could also be typical of what people present as dark energy. It is all hanging in there, peaceful in the nothingness of space. Suddenly there is a shock of a radio signal passing through the nothingness of ether. The action causes a reaction, light, the ether becomes polarized, new matter is being created. Small units of this started forming a ball of energy, gets more highly charged and we have the first formations of photons. We can call it ether, dark energy, zero point energy, Dirac C of energy, quantum state or any of the other hundreds of names. In the end we still remain with a substance from which all energy and every particle of matter originates and will return to at some other stage. This is a state of ether. I do not have all the answers and for a long time I considered ether just as a cosmic radiation. Now I know better. Ether is a non-observable substance from which all energy and matter arises. In these next few years I think we are going to achieve a major breakthrough in the understanding of ether. Already we can see the creativity of mankind. This next step into knowing and understanding the ether will make us creators in the universe. The prophecy of Nikola Tesla in 1892 will become a reality. Here, many generations pass, our machinery will be driven by a power obtainable at any point in the universe. Throughout space, there is energy. Is this energy static or kinetic? If static, our hopes are in vain. If kinetic, and this we know it is for certain, then it is a mere question of time when men will succeed in attaching their machinery to the very wheel works of nature. There is one issue I would like to make a clear statement on. Life is from God. God, life, consciousness and intelligence is not matter and do not originate from within the ether. The voice of God, which I am referring to in these videos, is not to be seen as literal. The force of life and the ultimate creator is beyond even the slightest ability of our understanding. I do believe in God, the creator, but not the God as seen by religions and mythology on this earth. They are rightfully seen as gods and creators in the same sense as I am the creator of this video series. Much of what people in this world see as God, in my opinion, are visitations from extraterrestrial aliens.